The entrance of God's word gives light and it brings understanding to the simple. Even as you're about listening to this message by the man of God, we hope that the light of God's word will be shed abroad in your heart. You will know what to do and you will know how to live. And so if you're new to this channel, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this message. Also go to the comment section and comment whatever you have learned. Share this message abroad because we won't always be a blessing to the world. Thank you. Prophet Samuel got to the house of Jesse and he saw a tall guy. Iliad. He said, oh, behold the king of Israel. He was flabbergasted by the outward appearance. God said to prophet Samuel, I have rejected him. Long time I've rejected him. God does not look as man. Man looks at the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. At the heart. In vain do they worship me. They worship with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Where your treasure is, there your heart is. How committed is a man to the house of God? It's a reflection of the true position of his heart. Your resources, your time, your commitment, your dedication. Okay? How committed are you? It's a reflection of where your heart is. Where your treasure is, is where your heart is. Where your treasure is, is where your heart is. I'm going to do a teaching on that in a short while. Where your treasure is, because that's critical, is where your heart is. So, God said, I rejected that guy long ago. And that is why you're planning to get married. These are things to think about. These are things to pray about. And I know I'm speaking to some people direct, directly this evening. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 12. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 12. Read for me. First Thessalonians 5 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. To know them which labor among you and are over you. To know them. To know them. The people over you in the Lord. So if you don't have anybody over you in the Lord, you are proud. If you don't have anybody over you in the Lord, you are proud. Because if you are not proud, no matter how much you know, there must be people that are over you. Over you. And he says you must know them. Meaning, it shouldn't be, I am under spiritual people. No, you must know them. They must have specific definition. They must have identification. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 13 now. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 13. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. Esteem them very highly. You, when you esteem somebody very highly, you can't, you can't even allow somebody to talk down such people where you are. You esteem them very highly. You can't tolerate it. The local church destroys pride. You know why the local church destroys pride? Because in the local church, you live by instructions. There's no room for democracy in the local church. Should we come on Wednesday next week or not? How many of you say we should come? How many of you? Sunday I, I announce. Wednesday everybody is back in church. We continue teaching till Sunday. No popular vote. Church is a place of instruction. You do this. You do that. That's the way the church is designed to function. There's no need to call you privately and say, can you do this for us? We announce you from the pulpit. That brother now is in charge of this. Case closed. Those that are over you, they have the rule over you. The word rule in the Greek is the word control. They have the rule over you. Obey them. Esteem them highly. Know them. That's why church destroys pride. You're just called to do something. And then all out of the blue, all of a sudden, you are removed. Another person is put there. It destroys pride. It's God's device. The church is God's device for destroying pride. The church is not a democratic party. Look at Hebrews 13, 17. Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 17. 
Obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves, for they watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. Brother, you know, Pastor Isaac, when he was leading prayer, led along those lines in prayer. That was by the Spirit of God. So how can someone have the rule over you in the have the rule over you? Only in the local church. Only in the local church can someone have the rule over you. To watch over you. Rule over you. So God emphasize, God's emphasis is the local church. God's emphasis is the local church. Obey them that have the rule over you. You only have the rule over me if I am in the local church. And you know some people are very, some people are hypocrites. They are easy to shift loyalty. They are not loyal to anybody. They are only loyal to their stomach. They are not loyal to anybody. They are only loyal to their stomach. I've seen a number of them. I mean, I've been a pastor for decades now. There are people that are not loyal to anybody. They are only loyal to their stomach. Anybody that starts giving them something for their stomach becomes their spiritual father. They can even be in the church and have a different spiritual father from the pastor. Because the person is dropping them hand, hand me downs. So the person suddenly becomes their spiritual father. He becomes God for them. He becomes their source. They are not loyal. And such people, the moment the person stops dropping those things, he becomes a bad person. They are not loyal to anybody. And those are dangerous people to hang around. Those because they can sell anybody for their stomach. You didn't hear what I said? They can sell anybody for their stomach. He said, recognize the one over you. Recognize the one over you. I'm saying, I don't like that church. That church has control. That church has control. Well, that's what the Bible says. Spiritual authority will have over you. They will have a rule over you. And submit yourselves. Because they watch over you as they that, that, that must give account. That means your pastor is part of God's will for your life. Your pastor is part of God's plan for your life. Your pastor is part of God's program for your life. We take instructions in the local church. So submission in the local church breaks pride from your life. Submission in the local church breaks pride in your life. I mean, you can imagine the CEO of a company with a lot of people under him. The budget of his company is five times the budget of the church. Yet, he cannot stay away from church without taking permission. In his company, everybody takes permission from him. But when he comes to church, he himself must take permission from pastor. He may have more money. He may have more influence. He may have more affluence. He may even be biologically older than the pastor. But yet, when it comes to the pastor, he submits himself, he humbles himself, and he takes permission. And the pastor can tell him, permission not granted. You must be in that meeting. Yes, sir. He goes to rearrange. That is a man under authority. The local church breaks pride. You that everybody is shaking for, you still have somebody, you too, you shake for. That's the way life is designed to function. Are you still in the building? Yeah? The church breaks pride. The church trips you of pride. The church brings you to a place of humility. God has put men over your life. You are accountable to this man. And by being accountable to men, you are accountable to God. By being accountable to men, you are accountable to God. In Acts chapter 4, you read about they brought everything to the apostles' feet. Did we read that? Hello, church. Did we read that? They brought everything where? To the apostles' feet. Apostles' feet is not just physical leg. It means submission. That even after they sold their houses and cars and everything, and they sold it for sharing in the church, yet they didn't go about sharing it. They didn't say, now, nah, since I have sold the house for sharing, bro, come. How much do you need? Take No. They brought all and submitted it to spiritual authority. It is the apostles that determine the distribution. It is called submission. 
Once it is for the Lord, it is submitted to pastoral authority. They brought it and submitted it to the apostles' feet. And the apostles now supervise the distribution. It's not that people just stood up by themselves and started sharing money in the church and giving people money. No, you are out of order when you operate like that. You are out of order when you operate like that. Because the church is a place of order. If there is no order in the church, there will be chaos. And in an environment of chaos, the spirit of God is hindered from operating the way he wants to operate. Order is of God. Order is the will of God. Order is the plan of God. Am I talking to somebody here? Things must be done how? Decently and in order. I'm going to deal with order, the, the system of order in the house of God in a few, not today, but in the course of these teachings. You know, are you aware that even the poor in the church in the book of Acts, it was from the pulpit that distribution was made to them. The word apostles' feet, submission. Submission is the meaning of apostles' feet. Let me tell you something. Everybody listen. People in the kingdom of God don't just emerge. People in the kingdom of God don't just emerge out of the blues. No, people don't emerge like that. For example, the man called Barnabas. Barnabas already had a record in the church. The church knew Barnabas. Barnabas was among those that would sell property and bring the money to the church. So Barnabas had a track record. People knew him in the church. It was out of spiritual growth that Barnabas emerged. And you could follow his track record. He didn't fall from the sky. He didn't appear out of the blues. That is why you are planted in a local church so people know you. You grow and build integrity and build a testimony. So that when finally you move into a particular dimension of your life, there are witnesses to witness on your behalf. Am I talking to somebody here? Yeah. You must have some track record. Some guys come appear to me and say, I'm a man of God. I ask them, where are you appearing from? They say, oh, I, I, in my room. I know that they are just jokers. They are just jokers. God takes a solitary and puts them in a family for accountability. To break pride Take away selfishness and raise you up to be a servant of all so you can be great. People don't just emerge. People have track records. I'm teaching here tonight. People don't just emerge. People have track records. You know, and if you observe very well, that was how it was in the early church. So there was submission in the early church. In Acts chapter 6, when there was a murmuring among the widows for being neglected, it was the apostles that said, let us. They came to the apostles. They didn't go to Facebook. They didn't go to Twitter to say, oh, I am in a church, but nobody is caring for me in the church. No, they came to the apostles and said, the widows are being neglected. And the apostles made a decision. That is order. That is order. Order in the local church. Order in the functioning of the house of God. Somebody shout hallelujah. We are so grateful for having you here on our platform. Kindly hit the subscribe button if you are new here. And also like this message for us. Do well to comment in the comment section because we want to know what you learned and where you're watching us from. Thank you, message community.